In this week's video, we are going engine agnostic, meaning that we're not going to be using any engine. We're going back to the fundamentals, actually. Um, this time around, we're going to be reading and writing both binary code and also hexadecimal code by hand so we can understand how to write it and also how to read it. It's a bit different than usual. Hope you guys enjoy. We're trying something out new. So if you do, let me know in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let's do it. <laughs> Good morning everybody, welcome to a fundamental video in which we discuss low-level code. Amidst all the confusion right now with uh, Unity making falls in itself and um, just people confused about whether or not they should switch engine, what a better time to just discuss low-level code. What we're going to be discussing today is a concept that you technically do not need to know if you're making uh, games with an engine. If you're using a high-level language, c -sharp, for example, you don't necessarily need to know these things. For the sole purpose that everything is kind of abstract at that level, it's human readable, but there are some times and there are some instances in which you need to go uh, low level. And um, for those time, you need to understand what the hell you're looking at. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. We're going to be discussing about um, how to display number in different format, base 10, base 16 and binary. Let's switch the screen and let's see what's going on here. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna try and represent a simple number at first. For example, we've got 10 hit points over here, right? How do we write 10 hit points? Well, in the format that we know of, the format that we're all used to in our daily life, in the decimal format, 10 hit point is actually represented this way. So it's represented by a one and a zero. It's simple enough, right? Um, in binary format now, how does 10 look like in binary? Well, 10 in binary actually looks like this. 10, 10, which looks odd for the moment, but we'll get to that in just a bit. And finally, in the hexadecimal, it is represented like this, with an A. So. We're going to learn towards the end of the video, we're going to learn how all of these numbers are actually the same for us. This is 10 unit as we know of. Now I'm quickly going to go over the decimal format. Um, hopefully you know it by now. It's the one you use on a daily basis. It has what we call symbols and you have 10 different ways to express um, symbols inside of the decimal format. You know them by now. Hopefully you know them by now. It's of course 0, 1, 2 three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and finally nine. So you got your 10 different symbols. It ends at nine, but we count to zero. So of course that is a total of 10 different symbols. And using these 10 symbols, the way that you actually, um, that you express values is this way. So zero is equal to zero zero unit in this case. So just here, imagine that this is the amount of apple they are. One is equal to one, two is equal to two, and so on. Until you reach the point where you no longer have any symbols, which is here. So you get nine is equal to nine. And after that, what we do is that we start over. So this now becomes zero, but we go to the left hand side and we start counting from here. So now one and zero is equal to 10. This is how we work with decimal format. Makes sense, everybody knew about that, but let's remember that concept of actually carrying the number over towards the left because we'll need it in just a bit. We will need it for the binary format. Um, binary, which I'll just leave here, um, is actually expressed in computing in two different ways. So computers, they don't have a notion of two, three, four, five, they just have a notion of on and off. So this is why we have the zero and then we have the one. Zero meaning off, one meaning on. So this is usually represented as true and this is represented as false if you're gonna cast that to Boolean. Now, if you want to, I don't know if this is legit that I'm gonna say that, but binary is kind of like the same thing as a base 10, but it would be a base two because you have two different symbols to express that. So instead of having zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you only got zero and one. So with that in mind, we are going to use the same concept as we had earlier. 
So now we have these two symbols to start uh, expressing values. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing we done for the binary format. Zero is equal to zero, one is equal to one. And at that point, we already ran out of symbols because we only have two symbols, right? We only have zero and one, nothing else. So just like we've done for decimal format, we're going to carry it over to the left hand side. And now this one zero is equal to two because that's zero unit, one unit, two unit, and we're just gonna keep on counting like that. Um, and we keep on going. So here we can increment this symbol, that's three. And at that point, we can't increment this one, we cannot increment this one, so we reset them both, and we carry the one over to this side. Sorry, the handwriting isn't great. Gotta get used to that, but hey, trying new things, right? Um, from that point on, we start incrementing where we can with a single unit, so here it is. This is what it looks like. For six, we no longer can increment this one, so we have to move it over towards the left. We end up with something like, oops, sorry. We end up with something like this. And for seven, we get the one, 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 just like that. Right, I'm just gonna keep on writing the rest of this. So all of these three here cannot be incremented anymore. We're gonna go ahead and go on the left hand side, do one, zero, 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 which ends up being eight units in this case. And we start counting from here on. So this is nine one zero we cannot increment this one so now this becomes this remember this was 10 earlier so this is why 10 10 is actually expressed as 10 or sorry it's not 10 10 in this case it's one zero one zero is 10 and we keep on going this way always incrementing this value here um in the first slot until we can't anymore and then when we can't we carry it over towards the left so in this case we have to carry it over to the left, but this one can't take it anymore. So we put it here and that would be 12. Oh, let me go on this side real quick. This is 13, this is 14, and finally this is 15. So I said 13, 14, and of course 15, good. There is a total of 16 different values you can express using these four slots over here. So another way that you could read numbers really quickly is using this technique. So one, two, four, and eight, those are gonna be static. You always increment by two every time that you go towards the left. Um, so one times two times two times two. If you're trying to read something like this number over here or this number over here or this one, you go like this. So let's take this first number here. This is eight plus two, so this gives 10. This is eight plus four plus two, so this gives us uh, 14. And here this is two plus one, this is three. So you look at the bit, if they are active, if they are true, then you take the number above that and you just calculate all of that together. If we want to express bigger values, which of course we'll need if you want to make bigger games and bigger color ranges and all of that, all of that kind of stuff, we are going to need more bigger numbers, right? So eight, let's do 16, 32, 64, and 128 over here. So the value here we'd like to express is, um, let's try and do a color, right? So let's try and do a color. I'm going to take a color, a cyan, for example, and here we can see towards the end that there is a, re a red, green, and blue value. And those values, they are expressed as a tint of red, a tint of green, and also a tint of blue. So if we wanted to express that color in a video game, we would need 33, 227, 206. So let's do 23. I forgot already what it was. 227, 206, okay. 227 and 206. Now, I didn't take the easiest value to read, but let's go ahead and try it out. So 23, how do we do 23? Well, we start at the highest number that is beneath 23. So here it would be 16. So we do 16 plus eight, that gives us um, 24. So we can't do that because we go beyond the number. 
So instead of doing 24, we're going to do plus 4. This is 20, this is 22, and this is 23. So this is how, with two bits combined, we were able to write the number 23. Now going ahead um, and doing the next number, which is 227. Let's start at 128. Uh, 64, which gives us uh, 192. I need my calculator here, but can we do 32 on this? We can do 32 because this gives us 224. So here, get another bit. So we're at 224. Um, 224 plus three, yeah. Plus three is gonna give us the number we need. So here we go, we're gonna say plus two, plus one. Okay, so that sounded a little bit more complicated than it should have been. That's because my, my brain just didn't do the maths. So 128, 128 plus 64 plus 32. We don't do plus 16 because we haven't included this bit. Don't do plus eight, don't do plus four, plus two, plus one, which ends up being uh, 227, the number we need. And then finally, let's do the last one really quickly. So 128 plus 64 plus eight plus four plus two. So that would make sense, yeah. So we said 128, 192, 200, 204, 206. And this gives us the 206 that we need. Okay, now we put them all together to just say, hey, the, the value we're looking for here, the color value we're looking for here is the following. So it's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Now this is really fun to look at, I am sure of it. Hey, congratulations guys, you just expressed cyan so if you want to express the color cyan this is how we do it through this congratulations we've made our first binary number okay so at this point we've got two way of defining the same color and here it is we've got the decimal way and we also got the binary way decimal with decimal we know that 23 is the tint of red 227 is the tint of green and 206 is the blue um for a computer, the computer can't read that off the get-go. The computer can only read zero and ones. So he knows that the two first bit in that array of bits, how many bits would give it, uh, he knows that the two first ones are red, the next two are green, and the next two, they're blue. Now, what if I tell you there is an even smaller way that we can carry this information over through, for example, a packet. If we're trying to define what is our color in a multiplayer game, how are we going to fit that information through the network so it fits as little space as possible? You know, we're in computing, we're trying to do things as efficiently as possible, so how do we do that? Well, we have to introduce what we call the hexadecimal, so hexadecimal format. And what is the hexadecimal format? It's basically the same thing as the decimal format, but you just put hexa in front. What does that mean? Hexa is six, decimal is 10. You do these two together, that is 16. What does that mean? It means that we now shift to a base 16 number system. In practice, how does it look? Just like we've done it earlier for the decimal format, we have all of these, zero, Oh, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is where it ends for the decimal. But here we're on base 16, so we need more than that, right? So here is how we express the rest. A, B, C, D, E, N, F. And now we have a total of 16 different symbols to express a number of value. And just like we've done earlier, we are going to start expressing some values. So, hey, zero, you know, that's equal to zero. One is equal to one. 
9 is equal to 9 and if we wanted to go one step above that for the decimal format we had to reset and put 1 start counting pretty much from the left hand side here and that would be equal to 10. Now that is true for decimal but for hexadecimal we're not done counting so after 9 we're not done counting so yeah 9 but we can go one step above that so now 9 becomes a a and a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 11 c is equal to 12 d 13 the uh, 14 and finally f which can't fit on my screen right now but f is equal to 15 does that ring a bell by any chance because there is also another format that used to end at 15 and that format was a bit so the computer actually prefers that we use the hexadecimal system because every bit could actually be one symbol all of these bits at the top here we can express them using hexadecimal so I made myself a small table over here just to help out so this is 8 plus 4 12 plus 2 14 this is 14 also expressed as E so this first digit over here, uh, sorry, this first bit could be just expressed with a single symbol that is called E. Next thing over here, this is 8 plus 4, so that is 12. 12 could be expressed as C. What is this one? This is 1 plus 2, this is 3, could be expressed as 3. This one is 14 again could be expressed as E. Um, bu 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 bu, what is this one? This is 1, 3, 3 plus 4, that's a 7. It takes me a bit of time to compute this type of thing, but uh, yeah. And finally, 1 is equal to 1. So our number, sorry, our color could be expressed in this way as well. 17E3CE. Let's verify that because I haven't actually, I forgot the color. <laughs> okay, let's write it by hand. Um, towards the end over here, you got the this here, this digit sign. It's actually, uh, it stands for decimal. So let's enter this manually. 17E3CE. And that is the color we had earlier. That is our sign expressed in the decimal format. Whew. Okay, a lot of content. Hope you guys are starting to get the gist of it. Um, one thing I could just specify before we end this off. If you're writing the same exact way as we do for decimal number, uh, ba -ba -ba, you go like this. This is E is equal to 14. F is equal to 15. You already know this by now, but what do you do when you're done counting? Well, you start over again. So now this becomes zero and you have a one over here. So one zero in hexadecimal is actually 16 until a point that you reach, for example, nine and F, nine F is 159. I had to look it up because I can't count that fast. But um, what do you do when you reach that point? Well, it's the same exact thing. So here we can't increment this symbol anymore, but we can still increment this one. Remember, we have 16 symbol. We don't just stop at the nine over here. So now this becomes A and 0. And A0 is equal to 160. Until we reach the famous FF standing for, for feet or 255. Woo! We've done it, boys. Once again, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please drop me a, a um, well, a like, of course, that'd be nice, but a comment, mostly, is what I'm looking to get, just to see if the new format kind of works. Not all videos are going to be like that, but some of them could, and if you enjoyed it, well, more will. <laughs> so, hey, thank you so much for watching once more. See you later. See you soon. Bye.